Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today here at FFG Live. Sorry we're a couple minutes late, but I think we're over the technical difficulties, so everything should be good to go now. So today we are here to talk about Star Wars Unlimited, and I'm very excited to be joined by Danny Schaefer, who we all know and love, and Jeremy, I believe it was Mr. Hollywood in the chat, Zwern. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. I just know you as Jay-Z, yeah. but I'll go with supposedly Hollywood. you have a full name. It's on the bottom of the screen now. Sounds good to me. I just, I don't use it much. But yeah, a couple of our designers for the game. And we're very excited to talk to you about something you know a little bit about already, because we posted a couple articles this morning. We posted ours, mm -hmm. and then TCG Player posted theirs about our pack breakdowns for Star Wars Unlimited. So we're going to talk yeah. about packs. Um, but before we get into it, for those that didn't read the articles, or maybe are used to like, the other games that FFG does, which are usually <laughs> big boxes and a lot of content, just explain to me what a booster pack is for those that maybe have never played a TCG before and are just FFG fans. Uh, yeah, so a booster pack is going to be the main way you get most of the cards for the game. It's a uh, randomized pack of cards, uh, 16 cards, as we said in the article, uh, and you open it up and there will be a certain mix of cards you get in there, uh, but what exactly you get is going to be random. Mm -hmm. um, and we can talk a little bit, too, about sort of our philosophy for what we wanted to do when we were designing these booster packs. Um, from the start, we had two really big goals we wanted to hit. One was make these packs work for draft and sealed play. Yep. Um, 16 cards is uh, more cards than some other TCGs have. And the reason for that was we wanted you to, to be able to draft out of them uh, easily just with, like, three booster packs. Uh, and as we go into the details of the packs, you'll see how we uh, set up the breakdown specifically to work in Draft and Sealed. Uh, and then our other big goal was just make these packs fun to open. We, wanted, uh, we didn't want the experience that you sometimes have where it's like you open your pack, you flip all the way through, skip the first <laughs> 15 cards and just see what your rare was. Yep. We wanted there to be potential for there to be something exciting in every single spot in the pack. Uh, so that was a really big goal for us. Um, and yeah, we'll talk about that more as we get into each specific slot. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of excitement, a lot of cool collectability uh, in these packs as well. Great. Um, with that, I think we can probably just dive into the pack breakdown. Yeah, let's do it. So you already mentioned 16 cards in a pack, for those yep. that didn't see the articles this morning. So there are 16 cards, and we are going to go through our pack slot by slot, yep. just to make it very clear. I know those of, that have read the article have some of the information, but getting to talk about it a little bit more and answering some of your questions you might have is going to help with greater understanding. For sure. So let's just start at the top. Yeah, so uh, when you open your booster pack, the first card you're going to see uh, at the front of that pack is going to be a leader. There is a leader in every pack, exactly one leader. And the big reason we did this, uh, primarily, was for draft and sealed play. We want to guarantee that you have, everybody has uh, the same number of leaders to work with when they're playing limited like that. Makes sense. Um, and also a secondary goal, I guess, is, uh, as we've talked about before, we, want, we don't want you to be like uh, gated by being able to get a certain leader. If you want to build a Leia deck, we want Leia to be an easy card for you to acquire. So putting a leader in every single pack uh, definitely helps with that. Uh, with that said, we know that you only need one leader to play your deck. If you see one in every pack, eventually you're going to see the same leaders a lot of times. So we wanted to find ways to add excitement to that slot. Uh, and there's a few ways we do that. Uh, one is that there are two rarities of leader. I don't think we've said this before, but uh, there are common leaders that you've seen, and there are also is a possibility for rare leaders. Uh, and the main thing with rare leaders is they're often going to have more unique kind of weird abilities, um, like abilities that maybe would be hard to build a draft deck around. So we wanted the commons there to be sort of the fundamental, basic, like, it'll be easy to build a deck around Leia or Boba Fett or whoever in draft. Uh, the rares are going to be more weird specific abilities that are more aimed at constructed. Uh, the other cool thing we have in that pack, or in that slot in the pack, uh, is hyperspace versions of the leaders. And uh, I think yeah. hyperspace is a word we haven't said on stream before. It, it is not. <laughs> it is not. So, yeah, I'm going to touch on that just a little bit yeah. to start because people have already seen hyperspace leaders. True. So anybody who has paid attention to the cards that we did at Gen Con and the cards that we're going to be doing at other events as we continue to go to more spiel coming up very mm -hmm. soon, those are hyperspace versions of cards. So that's exciting. But yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of feed into what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. From what I know, hyperspace isn't just for leaders. Right. That's for any card you can open in a booster pack, you could get a hyperspace version of. Right. So 
So just talking about hyperspace just as a whole, I, as a player, we all know who my favorite character is, right? We all know that I am going to have three Kane and Jarrus in my deck, yeah. right? But knowing that there is a hyperspace version of my favorite character means that I could have three hyperspace Kanan and have like a super cool upgraded version of that card. That's going to be the same yeah. for our leaders. Yeah, exactly. Sweet. Uh, it's, it's pretty exciting. It's just a, a cool way to bling out your deck a little bit, get that full bleed border. Uh, and like as you saw with Kanan, it looks super cool. Wait, saw with Kanan where? Uh, oh, oh you, haven't, you haven't seen Kanan? No, I haven't seen You didn't seen know Kanan was already? No. Is he in no. the set? Uh, you know, he, he might be. Sweet. <laughs> Uh, and then the last, uh, the last source of excitement in the leader slot is probably the most exciting card you could potentially open in a pack of Unlimited, uh, which is the Showcase Leader. And uh, these were previewed in the article. I think we'll throw them up on camera for you as well for anyone who didn't see that. These look gorgeous. Uh, they are alternate art, uh, full bleed art, and totally alternate frame graphic design treatment. They look spectacular. Uh, they're also foil. Um, and these are the rarest of the rare cards. Uh, you'll get one showcase leader uh, about every 12 booster boxes. There's 24 packs per box, so uh, you can do the math on that. Um, and this is really an example of kind of what we're going for with this game as far as the balance between playability and accessibility versus collectability, where a common leader like Leia is gonna be one of the easiest cards to acquire in the game. There's a leader in every pack. You only need one leader in your deck ever. Um, if you want to play with the normal version of Leia, you're going to be able to get it pretty easily. The showcase is on the total other end of the spectrum, where this is the most exciting collectible rare card you could ever open in your pack. Um, but it's the same card mechanically, it's just a cool yeah. cosmetic treatment. Yep. And that's really our, what our goal is. Very exciting, yeah. It's be a very big thrill to open when he's in a pack. Like, that's such a cool moment to, to go around and tell your friends, go, I got, and show up to a tournament, it looks like my cool showcase leader. And, so yeah, I can't wait to be able to crack some of these in packs. Right, yeah. I know. Yeah, I'm really I, excited for them. I know people were commenting in the chat before we even started the stream, we're not cracking any packs <laughs> today, so don't get excited about that happening maybe later on. <laughs> we don't have any to do that for this stream today. So yeah, yeah you get the, the cool images that were made by our awesome graphic designer. <laughs> and then, yeah, I guess the next slot would be a, a base slot. Yep. So every pack is guaranteed to have a base, a token base. These are just the uh, basic 30 hit points. Uh, there's four different ones, one for each of the aspects. Um, and every base will be double-sided. Uh, other side will have another token on the back, either upgrade or shield. Uh, bases can also be hyperspace, so it's kind of fun to, even just a base slot sometimes, yeah, it'd be kind of cool to get a hyperspace version the, for the full you know, board list. It'll really kind of pop a little bit better, so. Uh, bases, yeah, they're, again, one per pack, so you can make sure you get plenty to play with. Also for draft and sealed, you can play going around, you can uh, choose any token base you want to play for your deck. And yeah, it's just another way to uh, get the cards you really need, you know, a leader and a base you need for every deck, so every pack will have at least one, so there's plenty to go around. And... Yeah. Very cool. So starting the pack with the cards you need. Yep. And then getting into the cards, I mean, obviously I want the first <laughs> ones too, but then yeah. more of the cards that are going to be a lot more randomized because that's where a lot more of the set comes in. Right, yeah, right? the bulk of the cards in the set are going to be the commons, uncommons, etc. Yeah. Uh, and so the next slot in the pack, or the next nine slots in the pack, in fact, <laughs> <Here> we go. <laughs> are commons. Uh, you get nine commons in every pack. Uh, and these are really going to be your like fundamental core building block cards. Uh, these are going to make up the bulk of your deck in draft or sealed. Um, and we've really designed these so that they're as easy to use in as many decks as possible. Um, at Common is where you're gonna get the most cards that are just a single aspect that are just command or just villainy versus uh, higher rarities, you have more of the command plus villainy. Uh, you know, that goes in basically half as many decks, right? Uh, so Common is more cards you can play in a wide variety of decks, again, so that you can get the cards you need to fill out your draft deck. Uh, it's also gonna be a lot of uh, basic solid units um, you know, uh, just vanilla or just like a single keyword, things like that. Uh, which is not to say that they're not strong cards. Some of the That's strongest cards in set one are commons. Yeah. There's a lot of very simple removal events that are common. There's a lot of just solid, efficient units that you play in your aggro decks that are common. Uh, so yeah, good cards, but uh, again, the more widely generally usable cards are going to be in that common slot. Uh, and we talked about hyperspace already. Uh, every 
common slot in your pack has a chance to upgrade to hyperspace. So again, if you're flipping through your pack, any of those common slots could be that more exciting hyperspace version. Again, if you want to have that cool, blinged out, borderless deck. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I definitely do. Hold on. So yeah. yes, look through every card, deliberately looking through every single card in the pack because any of those could upgrade to that hyperspace. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, the next three slots are uncommons. So uncommons tend to be, you know, maybe a little more complex. Uh, they tend to have yeah, more aspects on the cards. Uh, that's where you find a lot of unique units. Uh, we have lots of lots of those cards on common slots. So uh, make ideally like limited be a little more interesting, where you might find some cards that are kind of build around cards, give them a little more direction, especially for drafts. Um, like General Viewers, I mean, he's a good example that he is plus one plus one each your other Imperial units. Yep. So if you get him early on in a draft, you might be like, hey, I'm on a, I care about Imperial cards more than I might normally. So we have more cards like that uncommon, kind of give you a little more direction. Cards maybe build around for drafts and sealed. Um, just like uh, the common slots, any one of those can be upgraded to hyperspace. Uh, but in addition, uh, one of those slots can be upgraded to a rare or legendary hyperspace. So yeah. that's really exciting because yeah, you can get multiple rares or legendaries in a single pack. Yeah. Nice. And yeah. as, as stated with every card, we're not going to call it out anymore, but also hyperspace. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But as Jeremy was saying, the cool thing is that if you get a hyperspace or a legendary in your pack, it doesn't take your rare legendary slot. Right. It takes your uncommon slot. So you just get multiple rares in that pack. Um, I guess next we can move on to the rare legendary slot. There is one rare and legendary slot in the pack. Um, it is usually going to be a rare card. About one in every eight packs, actually slightly better odds than one in every eight, but we rounded. Uh, you're going to get a legendary, uh, which is the highest rarity in the game. Uh, and these are going to be, again, we said uh, the commons are the basic cards. Uncommons are the slightly more complex build around cards. These are going to be the, you know, most complex, wacky, kind of out there designs in a lot of cases. The ones that maybe are harder to use, but uh, in the specific situation that they are good are going to be really good. Um, or they're just like really cool, iconic characters with really flavorful abilities. Right. Um, you know, I think we showed Boba Fett as the example there. Just, you know, just a cool card. Yep. Um, and to, just to clarify a point, I think people, some people have asked, uh, this slot will never be hyperspace because, again, if you get a hyperspace rare legendary, it will be in that uncommon slot instead. So yep. you, you always double up on the rares if you get that. Uh, yeah, cool. I guess then the last slot will be a foil slot. So yeah, every pack will have a foil, which is very exciting because yeah. I'm a personally huge fan of foils. I know everything I love to maybe collect a bunch of those and bling my deck out, try to be a deck full of foils. So yeah, every pack's guaranteed foil. And, that can be of you know any rarity. You know, of course, commons are more likely you get than uncommons, and those are more likely you get than rares or legendaries. But you could get yeah a pack with potentially three legendaries if you yeah. get a hyperspace legendary, a normal legendary, and a four legendary. So imagine getting that pack. That's definitely yeah. what a moment to open that and just yeah, it's really cool. And you could even get a rare leader on top of that. Have a sure. you know even, three even legendaries better. and a rare in your pack. It's pretty cool. Very spicy. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you already called it out, but we did have it pop up in the chat, so I just want to make sure that it's very, very clear. Legendary is the highest rarity in the game. Yep, highest rarity is legendary. Uh, again, obviously the hyperspace versions, the foil versions of these cards are going to be rarer than the normal versions. Right. But, um, but yeah, there's, there's not no... a reg legendary or a like following legendary tier card. No, right. They're all legendary. They can just be upgraded versions of the legendary. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very cool. Um, yeah, so that, that's pretty much a pack. I saw some people asking about the rarities in the foil slot. There is rarity there. You know, you'll see sure. commons in that slot more often than you see uh, legendaries, or more often than you see hyperspaces. Um, not quite as extreme as for the normal cards. Like there's, there are nine times as many regular commons as rares and legendaries in the pack. It's not going to be quite. There are not going to be nine times as many foil commons as foil rares, but um, there is some rarity built in there. Um, we can also talk about a few of the numbers we shared in that article, uh, just yeah, about yeah. how collectible some of these cards are. Uh, like hyperspace rare, le the odds of getting a hyperspace <laughs> rare or legendary in your pack. Yep. Sorry, hyperspace foil rare or legendary is one in fifty packs. Regular hyperspace rare or legendary is about one in fifteen 15. packs. Yeah. Um, so there's obviously steps to all of these, where there's stuff that's rare and rare and rare, depending on what you're looking to collect. In short case, like you mentioned before, is about one in twelve boxes. So. Yep. It's, it's uh, yeah, very exciting open to open some of these cards. It's going to be something I can't wait to do. I know, I know. I need to pull all of my Hyperspace Kanan <laughs> in one sitting. <laughs> one sitting. Let's do one draft. Yeah. Open one in each pack. There you go. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I mean, 
that would be amazing. If you can build that pack for me and then just seal it up and pretend that it's fresh, that would be wonderful. No problem. <laughs> All right. Thanks. I got you. I appreciate you, Jay-Z. <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> All right, cool. So, um, yeah, other than that, I mean, outside of any questions that people have had, which I think that we've been pretty good at answering the ones that have come up, we don't really have a whole lot else to talk about. Obviously, go and check out the article that we posted on StarWarsUnlimited.com. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to check out the article that our friends over at TCG Player posted as well, please take a look at both of those. And, yeah, we just appreciate you all being here. As always, I appreciate you guys being here. I already said it before, but I'll say it again. For anybody who can go to Spiel, you get to hang out with yeah. Danny. So that'll be a good I'm time. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Because I just see people. Uh, it's my first work trip to, to Europe, so it's going to be pretty oh, exciting. Oh, nice. Yeah. That will be exciting. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, again, thank you both. Thank all of you for being here, and we will catch you next time. Bye. <laughs>